Hi again guys, back with another unboxing. This one's come from zcube.com or .hk, whichever one it is now. <coughs> um, just one puzzle in here. Um, so it's quite a big box. I'm a little disappointed with them this time around. I always pay for Royal Mail shipping. It's quite cheap and it's always very fast. Now, it hasn't arrived in bad time, but it's arrived with Yodel this morning. And I knew there was something wrong because the tracking number wasn't the kind of tracking number that you normally get from them. And I did query this with them, but it's very, quite difficult to communicate with them. They don't speak particularly good English. So, anyway, I do worry about getting things from Yodel because they are a terrible, terrible courier. I've had all kinds of problems with them in the past, not, not delivering things and stuff. So, it, I really don't want to use a service that comes from them. But anyway... This one has arrived safely and something I've wanted for a long time and very excited about this one. Uh, you can see, very big. God, oh, that's heavy. <laughs> Blimey. I'm sure you can see what this one is. Through the packaging and obviously it's going to be... Oh, got some other stuff in here. What have we got here? Oh, keychain 3x3. Three three. Okay. Well, I've already got one of these, and this is just a cheap Chinese thing, but it's always nice to get free gifts. They always give you a cube bag or something normally. But, ah, there we go. Stickers. That's what I was looking for. Please tear from this corner. Okay. I'll do that in a minute. Let's get this puzzle open first. This thing is a monster. Tape, <laughs> almost as much tape as bubble wrap on it, and there we go. The Petaminx size of this thing. <laughs> it's been around for a little while now, this, but it's been also taking me some time to actually get myself one of these. It looks fabulous. Let's try some first turns. Well, the inner layer on this face is slightly stiff, um, but you can feel straight away that it's sort of breaking in. The rest of the layers oh, turns fabulously. And so does that. And so does that. I'm actually fairly certain that is finger trickable. Just get everything back in the start position. Indeed. It's, um, it's slightly too stiff to do it easily, and it's uh, difficult to get purchased because obviously you're not on a flat edge, you're on a very rounded edge because of the pillowing. But yeah, for something this complex, that is just astonishing, isn't it? I mean, they probably even corner cuts a little, I would imagine. Or perhaps not, actually. Yeah, doesn't do any reverse corner cutting, but yeah, that way, it's pretty effortless, actually. If I misalign no, that, that face there, and it's got a catch on it, so it's obviously, yeah. Bit of flashing still on something there, so it needs a bit of... Um, Turning to wear that one down. Well, that's pretty normal. That's just the breaking in process. There we go. That's sorted that. So let's try that again. A bit too far there. So you can't go quite a full QB. But yeah, half a QB and it's corner cuts just fine. And yeah, that face doesn't want to turn. The inner layers are definitely stiff. It seems on all the faces. But with a few turns and a bit of breaking in, things start to improve pretty much immediately. So it's definitely a puzzle that needs a little bit of breaking in, but that's fine, you know, that's, that's quite normal for these high order puzzles, I've got no problem with that. Um, as I've said many times before now, I don't loop them immediately because it, that kind of lessens the impact that the breaking in has. And so, you know, you, you want to get it broken in and then lube it because... It wears the plastic away better without the lube, which is what you want to do. You want to wear a little plastic away until things it basically removes minor imperfections that are different between the adjoining pieces. And if things can slide past each other easier, then that makes that less effective. Yeah, very good price on this puzzle. Oops, sorry, kicking the camera as I always do. <coughs> um. 
Now, HK Now Store and similar stores have this for $260 normally. Um, very expensive puzzle, of course, but that's understandable. Cubes.com, who I've bought from regularly, but I've kind of fallen out of favour with them because of poor customer service of late, have this for $160, which, which is basically $100 less, which is amazing. Um, Zcube.com, with the... Um, uh, coupon code that you can use on their site to remove significant, I think it's 20%, I can't remember. Um, and shipping was $172. And I thought, you know what, given the poor customer service I've had from cubes.com lately, I'm going to spend the extra $12 from a, and use a company that I've never had any problems with before. However, I did have the issues with the shipping this time around, but oh well, at least it's arrived quickly. And yeah, for the extra $12, I thought it was worth. Um, spending it elsewhere. If it had been significantly more, I probably would have still bought it from cubes.com, but for the sake of $12, I thought it was better this. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, if I can find them, I can't. <laughs> Aha, there they are. As you can see, I've got some crazy stickers for these, so I'm actually not going to put these regular stickers on. Normally I do, but this is going to be such a big stickering job. I'm not going to put the regular stickers on first this time. I've got these fabulous Super Pokemon stickers from Oliver's Stickers once again. Uh, this is going to be the world's first Petaminx Super Pokemon style. As far as I'm aware, I'm not aware of another one, even though it's been around for a while. I've never seen or heard of another one in a video or on forums or whatever. So, again, just like the 13 30 by 13 that I showed recently, this will be the world's first Pokemon Super Petaminx, and I'll be very, very happy to have it. However, that is a big stickering job I'm going ahead of me. So I will go away, I will do some more breaking in on the puzzle, and I'll put the sticker on, and I'll get back to you with some more thoughts once. Okay then, so the uh, Pokemon Super Petaminx is now stickered. And look at this thing, isn't this thing amazing? I can't get over how wonderful this looks, it really does. I absolutely love it. The stickering of this has taken me several days. Um, obviously, I wasn't doing it constantly, but there is 1,212 stickers on this, which is why I never bothered putting the um, standard stickers on because the, it's such, such an immense job. Um, I, just, I couldn't face doing it twice, to be honest, whereas on the smaller versions I have done exactly that. But yeah, I just couldn't face doing it twice. But look at this thing, isn't it absolutely amazing? Um, if you've watched my other videos, I'm sure you've likely seen what a Pokemon Super Cube is, but just in case you haven't, I'll just explain quickly one more time. Um, <clears throat> on a regular Petaminx, let's say we were solving the inner layer around the centres, um, and we were putting the edges in place, and I'd have five different white edges, which were all identical, and I could put any one of them in any one of those five positions. On this one, as you can see, say the, the top one here has a purple bar in it, and it points towards the purple face. So that edge can only go in that position. These edges here, sorry, these corners here that are centres, but the corners of each pentagon of centres, if that makes sense, also have the coloured bar. So each one can only go in one specific position. So like this one with the blue purple bar, it has to face the blue side and the purple side. Uh, they simply cannot be in any other place, any other position, and they won't be solved. So it just adds a little extra solving challenge to the puzzle, which you don't get on uh, single coloured ones, um, which is the whole point of this, the original sticker mod and uh, these coloured ones. I bought these stickers from Oliver's Stickers. Um, if you haven't checked out his site, please do so. I ordered them specially from him. He printed these at my request. Um, I believe he's making them for sale to anyone else who might want them. So if you have a Petaminx and this interests you, then take a look, look at his site. They are excellent quality. Having said that, a couple of these are slightly damaged. I may have to contact him about them. Um, let me see if I can find one. I don't know if you can uh, if that'll focus properly on this yellow and white one here, there's a slight chunk missing. It's like some of them weren't quite cut properly um, by the cutting machine, and they were still, I had to pull them apart from the um, 
the surround on the sticker material and this one is probably the worst one this orange white one here you can see it's actually got a corner missing which is a real shame uh, so i may contact him and see if i can get some replacements for them um and these do have a the amount of super cool some of these because it's an inherent problem with these minx stickers these high order mink stickers because they come to a sharp point there's a very very thin edge there and they do tend to have a tendency to to lift off slightly i may end up having to super glue those down and uh, this is they're just not wide enough to have enough sticky material to hold them in place we'll see what we're doing how they're doing during this solve um and then i'll decide whether i want to do that i don't like to super glue things on a puddle obviously unless i absolutely have to but uh, obviously it's, it's better than having the stickers come off and get lost but anyway I think it's time to get this thing scrambled up. I've done a little bit of breaking in on this, but not a huge amount. Um, obviously, it's going to get so quite a significant amount of breaking in during the solve, because it's going to be a long solving process, and everything's going to get turned a lot. It's a heavy puddle, and uh, it's um, not something you're going to want to hold in the air all the time, so it's definitely the one you're going to want to rest on a surface or on your lap while solving it. Um, but the, the problem with that is, moving it around, it does tend to, to I've had this problem with the uh, Terraminx, it does tend to pull these edge, um, tiny edge pieces off a bit more because they're obviously getting friction from whatever they're resting on. So I, I do have to take quite a deal of care with this one. Yeah, this inner layer, um, as I've said when I first got it out, is definitely stiffer than the outer layers. But hopefully, as we break this in, that will improve. Um, I won't lube it until I've done at least one full solve. Oh, I've got lined up then. Okay. <laughs> there we go. This thing is going to look absolutely insane when it's scrambled. It's going to be terrifying. <laughs> I'll definitely have to take a photograph of it scrambled once I've done it and post it on Facebook and see how many people I can give a heart attack to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is, I know I've said that those in the layers are a bit stiff, but it's absolutely incredible how well this thing turns in general. Um, the complexity of the pieces. I've seen um, disassembled versions of these and <laughs> I hope I never have to assemble one because it's going to take a long, long time. Um, but they, yeah it's a complex mechanism so the fact that it turns as well as it does is is pretty amazing really to me to be honest the people who design these things are absolute geniuses as far as i'm concerned yeah this is a scary looking beast <laughs> So many different colours everywhere that they always look worse scramble these super um pop and puddles than regular versions because of all the extra colours you've got everywhere. So it always makes them look even more scrambled if that makes sense than it could normally be. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be a long solve, that's for sure. It's taking long enough to scramble it, isn't it? <laughs> really now, all I'm looking for doing is looking for blocks of pieces that are still solved, like this pink rose here, and just splitting them up. And then I'll do some more random turns once it seems I've got everything scrambled. The thing is with something like this, of course, you don't actually necessarily have to have it completely and utterly scrambled in the sense that every single piece has to be separated from every single other piece that it belongs next to in the solve state. Because once you start turning things to solve it, you're going to scramble other things, if that makes sense. If, say, I left a, a block of, I don't know, two or three blue pieces remaining next to each other once i started solving the white center i'd find that i was splitting up those pieces anyway so you don't have to be quite so um i 
don't know, fastidious I suppose about getting the perfect scramble on the really high order puzzle like this because yeah, you are going to break other things up while you start solving the, the, the first stages. Unless of course you deliberately set out to avoid continuing to scramble those parts I suppose, but I would never do that because that's kind of pointless. Something's not lined up, there we go. As I showed it, we don't really do anything in the way of reverse corner cutting, so you do have to think, make sure things are lined up quite well that way. However, you can sort of deliberately set it up so it's misaligned in the other direction slightly to avoid that being a problem. So you're actually causing a kind of corner cutting situation rather than a, re a reverse corner cutting situation deliberately, and that way you can kind of avoid, help avoid any lockups. And we're kind of getting there, I think. Uh, we're getting quite close. There's a few little pieces that I still need to work on, but we're almost there. Let's see these blue ones here still need to be sorted. Turn, why don't you want to turn? Okay. Okay then, I think we are about there. I know we've got a bunch of green ones here that we need to sort out. Um as with I know I'm saying it turns very well, but as with any really high order puzzle, you do have to get things aligned to a certain extent. That's always going to be the case. You're never going to be able to get things to just align perfectly on a first, first attempt every time. It's because there's simply just so many pieces and layers, you know, it's always going to be possible to get one misaligned. Um, so they, they, they always take some care of these high order puzzles. There's no two ways about it, and you have to get used to that fact. But, yeah. Compared to the complexity and the number of layers there are on this, I think, as I've said numerous times now, it does turn fabulously. So yeah, I think I will call that one scrambled. I'll go away and solve it. It's going to take me a good few days to do this one. It's not going to be something I'm going to be able to do in one go. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to you with some more thoughts once I've done so. Okay then, so the Super Popman Petaminx is solved again and back to looking fabulous. Uh, took quite some time this one blimey uh, it really did um i didn't time it but it must have been i don't know six or seven hours something like that the um the difficulty is i mean obviously the solve hasn't changed much from the terraming or anything but the difficulty is finding the piece you want because there's just so damn many of them and because you've got to find the specific piece in every situation you can't find one of five like you would if it wasn't the super puzzle it just takes so long hunting around the puzzle for every single piece especially towards the beginning of the solve it gets quicker as the solve goes on because because obviously you've got less unsolved pieces to look through but it, oh, it's just very time consuming um it won't be a puzzle i solve a lot but it will get solved time to time. I'm not, I'm not for a moment suggesting I didn't enjoy it because I did. I enjoyed the solve a lot, but it is very time consuming and, and that tends to stop me from um, scrambling puzzles regularly that are extremely time consuming. However, having said that, it's still a great one to have in my collection because it just looks fabulous. It really does. And quite scary in its, its uh, unsolved state. Um, these, I will have to lube these inner layers. They, they've loosened up a little bit, but they're still definitely stiffer than all the outer layers they're associated with. Um, it's not a tensioning thing, because it's the same on every face, and each inner layer is stiffer than the three outer layers on every face. So, <clears throat> I will lube it and see if that makes any difference, but given the fact that lube is going to loosen up every face as well, um, or every layer, should I say, as well, um, I still expect them to be a bit stiffer. They're not terrible, it's definitely broken in a little, but they are most definitely um, noticeably stiffer than the rest. Um, difficulty wise, obviously, there's no great increase in difficulty above other puzzles of this nature that I've shown before, the Tomings especially. Um, there's, there's just more of it, which means it takes longer, but the actual um, 
solving difficulty and strategy is precisely the same so nothing untoward or unexpected in that department but yeah um, a great puddle obviously not a cheap one um, but well worth it I'm so glad I ordered these stickers from Oliver and they are fabulous quality there are a couple that um, are damaged as I mentioned earlier but it's not terrible or anything they're not noticeable unless you're really really looking closely so I may contact him about them but I'm not sure anyway I don't think I have anything else to say about this one guys so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and the rest of the videos on my channel please click like it only takes a second and it helps my videos get viewed by the people and thank you very much for watching I will see you next time take care now bye